Hi, I'm Scott Willison, owner of the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington, and today we are going to tie a, a pretty basic uh, but highly effective uh, salmon pattern that uh, I've been fishing all fall. This is uh, kind of a, a newer version of, of uh, a, a fly type that I've been fishing for a lot of years, and uh, I like this one better. It, uh, it's tied on a more durable hook. It, uh, uh, I, I find it holds up to fish a lot better. Uh, it uh, is a little bit heavier uh, than what I've used in the past, so it, it tends to get down deep pretty quickly. It jigs very effectively. Uh, I started with this concept uh, tying for, for pink salmon and kind of a pink or sometimes a white and pink version, and it worked really well. Uh, now that we're on to coho for chum, uh, this is a version that's been, been really effective this fall. I tie this in all kinds of colors. Uh, we're going to tie a white and chartreuse one to, today, but uh, olive with orange eyes, uh, black with orange eyes, purple with pink eyes, uh, shades of copper. Uh, the sky's the limit. Have fun with this one. Uh, I'm generally not great at naming flies, but uh, we're going to call this one the Strutter. Um, and truth be told, um, a huge Kiss fan recently saw Kiss on their their final tour, uh, or so they say. Uh, it was an awesome show. So Strutter is one of one of the all-time great Kiss songs, and uh, this fly certainly struts its its stuff when it comes to to salmon in our North Puget Sound rivers. So. In the vise, I have a size 4 Gamagatsu L11S3H. This is a 3X heavy hook that uh, is very, very heavy duty when it comes to salmon. Uh, I dare you to try to bend this thing out. And we are starting some 140 denier black ultra thread on there. Give ourselves something nice and strong to work with. Um, we're going to add uh, some eyes to this. These are the Chartreuse 3 16th inch Aquaflies Intruder Eyes. And I absolutely love these things. I've, I've tied a lot with various colors of tungsten beads over the years. They'll certainly work well, but it, it really irritates me that the, the paint starts chipping off after a few fish. So I have yet to chip the paint on these things. They are very, very well done. And they come in a 5 30 seconds, a 3 16 and a 1 8 size. So today we're going we're going pretty heavy with the 3 16 And I'm just kind of figure eight wrapping these and then doing some spiral wraps around the base. Just want to make sure they're not going anywhere, and I, th I think we're in good shape there. So we'll go ahead and take the thread back to just above where the barb was before I pinched it, and then we're going to take the thread back up. Uh, for the tail color on this one, we're going to use uh, an olive blood quill marabou feather, and uh, I've already just popped the tip out of that. Uh, I want to make sure this table or this tail has lots of mobility and uh, no stem in it to uh, hinder that action in the water. And we're going to go about the shank length on the tail here. Maybe a little bit longer than the shank length. Think, uh, think woolly bugger proportions on this one. Now that we've got that in place, we'll go ahead and trim our excess. By tying that in behind the eyes, of course, I'm just trying to get a nice uniform body. I don't want it uh, overly fat in the back where I tie in the tail. And then we're going to add some silver crinkle mirror flash. I'm just going to cut two strands of this stuff. A little goes a long, long way. I'm going to cut two strands and we're going to tie those in on the near side of the hook. And then we'll fold the rest of it over to the far side of the hook. 
and then we can go ahead and trim that. I like it just a little bit longer than the tail itself. And then I like to lift up that tail and just take a couple wraps underneath. Just to prop that tail up and help help prevent it from fouling. And then for the body, we are going to use some UV silver polar chenille. And then we'll go ahead and just wrap that up. I'm going to kind of sweep those fibers back a little bit as I go. And then we'll bring that to right behind the eyes. two, three wraps. And then trim that off. Now you're probably thinking at this point we're going to add a hackle or some rubber legs or a bunch of other cool things just to spruce it up. Uh, I Once upon a time I put a collar on these things. I found uh, really didn't make a difference and uh, this polar chenille is nice and soft they move quite nicely in the water so um, simple is better um, I guess you could also say uh, think about the old acronym KISS uh, keep it simple stupid and uh, this needs nothing else to be a fish catching machine so we are going to go ahead and do a four turn whip finish and call it good. So you could leave leave it as is. You know, of course, your salmon flies are going to get beat up by all the fish they catch. But uh, I do like to give this one just a little bit more durability. So we're going to pop some some Solares bone dry on the head there. Cure that up. I mean, you can literally crank out a, a dozen of these in less than an hour before a fishing trip. So it's not the end of the world when you stick them in a in a log or break off on a big fish. A uh, really simple fly, but uh, this thing has been catching the heck out of salmon uh, on the Skagit and some of the other rivers we fish. So definitely tie up a few this season um, and uh, enjoy. There you have it the strutter. Thanks for watching. You can find the materials for this and many other fly patterns at the Confluence Fly Shop in Bellingham, Washington. Please be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, we'll keep putting out the videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.